Okay, another episode of Weekend Shenanigans. We're back out in the yard looking at the tractor. Wheels on, uh, brake pads or, or brake shoes have finally arrived. These are the right ones. I had another order that were not the right ones. So if anybody needs brake shoes, let me know. These are uh, two inches wide versus the other ones are one and a half. So that was the issue. But anyways, we're going to put these suckers back together, and I'll show you step-by-step step how that goes. This is pretty much the same on all cars. So first thing you're going to need, these little bippies here. Uh, not sure what they're called, but I'll, I'll install one and show you what that looks like. Okay, so that's what they look like when they're on. Easy peasy. Spring-loaded. There's a back part and a front part. You've got to get the orientation right. And to put them on, you can notice that there's a slot in them and a slot on this guy. So you just push in and turn, and that's what holds them. And the spring tension will keep them from coming off. So that's about it. Two on the top, two on the bottom. This little hole here is where the adjusting uh, screw goes. And I'm gonna make a new plate that covers this, keep crap out of here. Uh, but otherwise, yeah, that's about it. I'll get to this section in a little bit. Okay, got the bottom two on, got the top two on. Now it's time for springs. And this is where it gets absolutely miserable because these springs over here are extremely tight and do not want to be put on. So let's set it down over here. So these are the two front springs. Here's the rear spring. Clean off all the cobwebs and crap. This is the tensioner or basically the adjuster. I'll show you how to adjust these in a second. Uh, I might clean all the grease out of there. You want no oil or grease. Anything that's a lubricant should not be in here. So, yeah, let me clean that up. Okay, tensioner is cleaned and installed. As you can see, you just stick a screwdriver through that little port in the back. By spinning this, you can push the shoes in or out. And that's how you adjust the, I guess you'd call it the preload on them. Um, yeah, that's basically all there is to it. So, yeah, let's get to the next part. Okay. Can't fight it, baby. in you could just come there's one now for number two. Does it there? I can take two. There we go. Okay. okay, we're back inside the shop, a little messier than usual, but right now we're going to make the cover shield for that little opening for the adjuster. That's where this bad boy comes in. I think there's enough meat left on this that I could cut out a sort of cover, keep crap out of there. Let's see if I can find the tin snips in this giant mess. Alright, the thing I like about tin snips is 
they basically make sheet metal like paper. You know, they're, they're giant scissors is what they are. And you sit there, you cut out whatever shape you want. A little tougher to cut than paper, but you know, you make, make tabs, make whatever you want. Drill a couple holes in it, deburr the edges. Boom, you got a brand new thing. So let me, uh, I'm gonna need to drill a hole in this. I need to put a bolt on it. I might even, uh, Oh, how am I going to do this? I might weld a nut on this so that there's threads. I don't know. I'll figure it out. Okay, there's our rough tag cut out. And I want to drill a hole right about, right about there. There we go. We got our center punch. We got our starting hole. Let's drill this bad boy. So a lot of people will... Sometimes say, oh God, look at that guy. Look at, look at the mess that he has in his shop. Such a hoarder. Well, that may be true, but one nice thing about being a hoarder, well, ho okay, there's, there's, there's different types of hoarders. There's the hoarders that collect garbage and crap, and that's just, that's just stupid. But there's those that collect, you know, tools, parts, uh, metals, stuff like that, uh, materials and stuff. That, that's, I think that's personally a good type of hoarding because, look at this, I just whipped up this brand new tag, took like no time at all. Looks pretty decent too. A, a lesser man would have had to go out to the hardware store, go get sheet metal, get, get all the little bits and bobs and everything required to, to make such a thing. But if you just save things as you see them, you know, sure you may not have a use for it right now, but you know... You gotta, gotta think ahead for the future. You'll see something and, you know, put it together. You can make just about anything. Anywho, let's get some paint on this so it's not as ugly. Yeah, this rosolium stuff dries pretty quick. I went a little heavy with it, but whatever. It's a tractor part. Doesn't need to be pretty. She ain't gonna win the, uh, any beauty contest. Uh, let's get her on there. Well, uh, ancient Chinese secret. Let's say you got some hardware inside a sort of a unit like this and you absolutely do not want that hardware to back off should anything happen. Well, you got a lock washer and a regular washer, so that kind of helps. But, you know, vibration and shit, it could actually start to walk back. What you do, you take a pair of pliers like these, you go on back, and give a real good squeeze. Like so. And usually that'll trash the threads past the nut so that, uh, I mean, you don't completely mangle them, but it's enough that if you had to get it off, you could still back it off. It'll cut its own threads, but through sheer vibration, it'll never come off. A little secret. A couple of love taps with the hammer ensures that she's seated, and we're good to go. Okay, so technically ready for the, uh, the wheel to go on, but... This tractor is uglier than sin because it's got a bunch of colors. It's got green. Originally it was yellow and black and then they added green and then for some reason some schmuck added pink. So uh, I'm going to paint this thing. I'm going to paint the inside of this fender at least and maybe touch up some of this stuff. And then I'll go ahead and put the wheel on because I won't be able to reach this afterwards. But uh, yeah, hopefully it'll look a little prettier. The inside of the fender or I guess this would be the outside, using the lovely Rust Free, which is a lovely undercoating. I've been using this on the dots and been really happy with it. So I'm gonna slather this on here. Okay, outer or inner fender, whatever you wanna call it, is done. Looks a million times better. Hopefully this should keep it easy to clean. Uh, this stuff will take a little while to dry, but once it does, uh, yeah, be able to just hose the sucker down. Now to paint the other side. And I've got this stuff, which we're going to try. Okay. Well, now one fender, at least. Doesn't look quite so much like ass. So hopefully, when I'm done, this whole thing will be two colors. Yellow and black. Anywho, let's see how hard it is to get that 300-pound uh, thing on here. Okay, so the way to adjust brake drums is you sit there with a screwdriver and you can see the tongs and you turn it so you can't turn the wheel. 
So you go until it stopped. Then you back it off a set number of turns. So I've got it to where I can't move it anymore. She's tight, tighter than a nun. So I'm gonna back it off. I think I'll do th three, three or four turns. So, or three or four screwdrivers. Okay, let's start this madness. Out of here. Don't put up with your kind. Fuck you, little bastards.
through that fucking thing. Ta-da! Garbage! Garbage!